Hello and welcome again to our Sunday sermon series on video. As you may have seen in Reminders of the Week, we're starting a new sermon series this week in the book of Ephesians. So if you haven't already, you might want to take some time to read through the whole book of Ephesians. It's not terribly long. Um, it just gives you the big picture of what we're going to cover over the next 11 weeks with a break from Remembrance, and then that will take us right up to Advent. But let me start by reading our Bible passages for today. <clears throat> and we begin with our Old Testament reading, which is Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the king, let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his faithful people. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And so now we're going to go to Ephesians, beginning at chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reached their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth the gospel of salvation, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray together. Lord, through the written word and the spoken word, may we better know your living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. From the time that I accepted the post here in Raynham and Wennington, Ephesians has been a bit of a constant companion to me as I prayed and prepared to come here and begin uh, to be your vicar. I sensed that what we needed after the long vacancy was to be regrounded in our faith being reminded of what it means to be followers of Jesus and reconnecting ourselves to prayer and God's word. So that's why we're encouraging everyone to engage in the prayer course with some manner and also why we're doing this series in Ephesians. And the overarching theme for the series, the overarching theme of Ephesians is about growing up in Christ. Growing up in Christ. The letter to the Ephesians, like most of the letters that Paul wrote to the churches, is about helping this new Christian community learn how to be church together. 
It's about growing up in Christ, maturing in faith, and embracing their identity as followers of Christ. It's a message we need today as much as ever, particularly in these days as we're needing to be creative and flexible in how we do church, we need to be reminded of what it means to be church. And Paul opens the letter reminding the church who they are in Christ, which sets the stage for the rest of his letter. He's reminding them that they are chosen and loved by God. That's their identity. And because of that identity and because of their belief, they are marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Now, our reading this morning is absolutely jam-packed, so we are going to have to focus in, and um, I've chosen to focus in on claiming our identity in Christ as chosen and redeemed children of God, and how when we do so, we can grow up in Christ, grow into greater spiritual maturity. So as we look at Ephesians chapter 1, we're looking at verses 1 to 14. If you have a Bible, open it up to chapter 1 and follow along. And again, I'd encourage you to use a Bible, an actual Bible, although a phone can suffice. So how does it feel to be chosen? Can you think of a moment when you were chosen? Perhaps you are standing waiting to be chosen for a team at school. Or you've been told you've been successful in your job application. Or perhaps it was when your husband or your wife asked you to marry them. There's a little thrill that goes with being the one who has been chosen. I will forever remember the day I got the call from Bishop Peter to tell me that I've been recommended to train for ordination in the Church of England. It was the fulfillment of a long-held sense of call, and I had been chosen. And it feels really good to be chosen, doesn't it? To be seen as qualified, talented, worthy of admiration or love. But in all those examples of being chosen that I've offered for a team, for training, as a partner, they all pale in comparison to what we read in Ephesians today. Because our chosenness is no longer about our worthiness or our qualifications or our talents. It's all about Jesus. And in our reading today, Paul reminds Christians we are chosen by God in love and grace through Christ's worthiness not our own. Look at verses 4 and 5. It says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will. Now, there are some theological concepts in there about what it means to be predestined and what that means for our free will, which people have debated for centuries. And we're not going to get in depth on that today. But what I will say is it is quite clear throughout Scripture that God calls us to himself and that that can be held in tension with our free will. It's one of the mysteries of our faith, but it is possible in God. So here we are. We are chosen before the creation of the world. Think again about that moment of joy, that little thrill you had of being chosen. If you are a Christian, God has chosen you. That's pretty exciting. Now this is one of those passages, those uh, bits of readings that I think the message translation really helps to bring to life. And this is how Eugene Peterson puts it. Long before God laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind, had settled on us as the focus of his love, to be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. He wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving by the hand of his beloved son. God had us in mind. He settled on us as the focus of his love. How amazing is that? We are chosen and beloved, and he wants us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift giving. Sounds really good, doesn't it? But is that a reality for you today? Do you experience that sense of being chosen by God? If not, 
How do we embrace that chosenness? Because if we're Christians, it is a fact. We are chosen. But sometimes it's hard to feel that. Well, I think the best way to embrace our chosenness is to be reminded of it regularly. And that's part of the reason you will hear me and probably every other vicar and pastor bang on about how important praying and reading your Bible is. Why? Because this is the way you get reminded of who you are in Christ. The world certainly isn't going to remind you. They're going to continue to remind you of all the ways you're not worthy of being chosen. They're going to tell you, you need to have qualifications. You need to be worthy. God says it's all about Jesus. And it's why worship is important as well. And that's why it's been so challenging for us not to be able to come together during this pandemic. We remind one another as we pray and listen to God's word together that we are his chosen ones. When one of us is feeling a bit down, we can remind another. We can come together and be reminded that we are chosen ones. And perhaps that's also why Paul is a bit repetitive in reminding us that we are chosen. He returns to this theme in verse 11. And again, I'm going to use the message translation because I love the way it puts it. It says, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. When we're chosen, we're in Christ. And that gives us identity. It helps us understand who we are and what we're all about. When we are able to embrace our chosenness, our identity as beloved and chosen children of God, it is then that we can grow and mature in our faith. And this is a process through the whole of our Christian life. Because becoming a Christian isn't just a moment in time thing. Yes, there's often a moment we can point to in our lives and say that, that was the moment when I gave my life to Jesus, or that was the moment when it all made sense to me. But that's a point in time. That's not all there is to the story. That's why we continue to read the Bible and pray and why we come together and worship. So many of you have told me how much you have missed being in worship together. And why is that? We miss the friendship, of course, the fellowship of being together, but we also miss the encouragement of one another. We miss being reminded of our chosenness in Christ. And we encourage one another to grow in faith and maturity when we're able to come together. Now, this is not to say we're a club and others are excluded if they're not chosen. The beauty of the gospel is its broad inclusiveness. Everyone is welcome to come and embrace their chosenness, to acknowledge what Jesus did on the cross and say, yes, I need that forgiveness so that I can enter into my chosenness completely. One of the books that I've been reading as I'm preparing for this series is by Eugene Peterson, who's also who did the message translation. And what he says about the book of Ephesians is that it offers us a realistic look at what we need to know to grow in maturity and to become healthy in God and robust in love. So over the coming weeks, as we explore Ephesians, let's remember that when we become Christians, we are chosen and redeemed. And we need to embrace the, our chosenness. But that's not the end of it. It's not a moment in time thing. There's more becoming to do. We continue to grow up in Christ. So no matter how old we are, no matter how long we've been a Christian, there is more becoming to do. There's more growing up in Christ to do. But today, let's commit together to embracing our chosenness, to remind one another of our chosenness. Not just for our own benefit, but because as we mature in Christ, we then have the foundations we need to share the good news of the gospel with others and how they can become part of God's family as well. So they can know what it means to be chosen, redeemed, and beloved by God. Let's pray together. Lord, we want to become healthy in you and robust in love. As we embark on our study of Ephesians, we thank you that you have chosen us and we ask that you would help us to embrace our chosenness. Help us to become more like you and to embrace the process of becoming, not getting stuck, but always seeking more of you. We want to grow up in Christ 
growing into maturity in faith. And as we grow in healthy spiritual maturity, may we grow in love for you and for others. Amen. Amen. It's been lovely to be with you for this short period of time. Um, would love to hear feedback um, from you on how you're finding this series and if you're finding it helpful. And uh, we pray and continue to pray that we'll be able to return to worship in full at some point um, as this coronavirus is restrained. So we continue to pray that God would restrain it. And we pray for those who don't yet feel ready and able to come to church. But we do hope that we'll be able to see you soon. Have a great day. God bless.